Without elections, American democracy would not count for a whole hell of a lot, and so obviously the security of those elections is of paramount concern. One Republican who cares a lot about that security is Iowa Secretary of State Matt Schultz, who is involved in an 18-month ongoing $150,000 investigation of voter fraud in Iowa. And so far, they've been able to find five instances of voter fraud. Now, that may sound like a very small number of people. In some hypothetical world, perhaps, where Iowa had seven, maybe ten citizens, that would be significant. That You could totally throw an election with that. Unfortunately, it turns out that Iowa currently has 2,123,024 registered voters. And so even if those five people somehow banded together to overthrow democracy in Iowa, I don't think they'd have much of an impact. But he says, I don't think you can judge the initiative until it's over. But still, they did find five people who pled guilty to voting fraud charges, and I think it would be irresponsible for us to not look over those five cases and find out what made them do it. Was it some sort of moveon.org, George Soros, Al Gore-fronted maneuver to overthrow Iowan democracy? Turns out it wasn't. In fact, three of the five who pled guilty had completed prison terms, gone out, and then voted before their voting rights were officially reinstated to them. So these are people who, at some point in the future, would have been able to vote, but they were just too excited by the prospect of being involved in American democracy, and they got ahead of themselves and pled guilty. One other was a mother whose daughter had recently moved to Minnesota, had missed the registration deadline there, and cast an absentee ballot for her in Iowa. Uh, that mother eventually pled guilty and was fined $100. $147. So that'll pay off at least part of the $150,000 they've spent so far. Uh, and in the final one, we have a man who was arrested for drunk driving and used his, bro his dead brother's identity to obtain a driver's license. And so, you know, these are crimes that they committed. They should not have done what they did. But it seems like after 18 months, after $150,000 of taxpayer money in Iowa that was spent you should have a little bit more to show for your efforts than five people. And understand that this one huge investigation that we're spotlighting is just a part of the $280,000 of funds that they've spent so far investigating voter fraud. You're gonna have to find a lot more than five people for there to be a cost-benefit analysis that doesn't make Matt Schultz look like a moron. Now, when confronted with the mediocre results of his investigation, Matt Schultz had this to say, before, the narrative was that there's no such thing as voter fraud. That's obviously changed. I, for one, hope that you're right, Matt Schultz. I hope that the results of your investigation go wild all over the internet, spreading virally, so that everyone knows what these bullshit investigations end up with. Absolutely nothing, except perhaps a lot of federal dollars being spent on a wild goose chase. There is a problem with voting in America, but it's not a woman casting an absentee ballot for her daughter in Minnesota. No, the problem is a very organized attempt by Republicans to make it more difficult for all sorts of groups to vote in America. I'm talking about the elimination of early voting, absentee ballot voting, voting by mail, internet voting, registration on the same day, making it so there are fewer voting machines in urban areas, things of that sort, making it almost impossible to use any form of identification to actually vote. That's the real problem with America. It's a very organized attempt to disenfranchise groups like the poor, like the elderly, minorities, college students, and things of that sort. That is the big problem with American democracy right now, and that is why leading up to the next presidential election, I will be, whenever I can, spotlighting attempts to restrict American voting rights. Matt Schultz, if you really want to be a defender of democracy, why don't you investigate laws like that that are actually doing harm to American democracy? I think you'll find you get a much better return on your dollar.